Welcome to our potty training techniques presentation. My name is Robin Graham and I am the teacher specialist for our birth to five programs for Harford County Public Schools. In this presentation, we are going to learn the requirements for success to potty training, learn the skills involved in potty training, learn strategies and the steps for successful training, and learn strategies for what happens when there's regression in the potty training. When and how to help your child learn to use the potty depends on how ready your child is, as well as your own beliefs and values about toilet training. There is not one right way or one right age to learn. All children develop at rates and different rates and may be ready for potty training at different times. There are many different ways to work on potty training. Picking the one that works for your family is the key. No matter how you teach your child to use the potty, remember that it is a learning process that takes time. Keep in mind that children with special needs may take longer to potty train or be ready to begin at a later age. Some critical, re critical requirements for success. Motivation. It's very important that the child is motivated to use the potty. They need to be able to communicate functionally, and whether that is with words, sign language, gestures, or pictures, that they can get across that they need to use the bathroom. There must be consistency with potty training routines. Young children do best with consistency in their daily routines, and potty training is no different. And they need to be developmentally ready. Children must have that developmental readiness to begin potty training. And in the next few slides, we're going to discuss the skills that they would need to begin potty training. So skills involved in toileting, they need to recognize the need to go to the bathroom, waiting to eliminate when they get in the bathroom, entering the bathroom, pulling their pants down, sitting on the toilet, eliminating in the toilet, using toilet paper correctly, pulling their pants back up, flushing the toilet, and washing and drying their hands. And they may need some help with these skills at first, and that is okay. Um, but then they'll get to be able to do them independently. Signs that children are ready to use the potty. Most children develop control over their bowel and bladder by 18 months. This is the physical skill of potty training. How ready a child is emotionally to begin potty training depends on the individual child. Some are ready at 18 months, while others may not be ready until three. According to zero to three, about 22% of children are out of diapers by two and a half, and 88% of children are out of diapers by three and a half years old. So some of the signs that children are ready, they need to stay dry for at least two hours at a time or after naps recognize that he or she is urinating or having a bowel movement, and developing the physical skills that are critical to potty training. The ability to walk, the ability to pull their pants up and down, and the ability to get on and off the potty. And they may need some help with these skills at first, or if they have some mobility issues. Um, but then as they get through the process, they will need less help. Their sign, another sign that children are ready is they copy a parent's toileting behavior that they can follow simple instructions, and again, that motivation that they want to use the potty. So when to not start potty training? When children are going through a significant change or several changes, it may not be the best time to begin potty training. Some of those examples include an upcoming event or recent family move, beginning new or changing childcare, switching from a crib to a bed, or a recent birth of a sibling, or a recent death or major illness of a family member. These are some issues that can sometimes get in the way of successful potty training. When children are going through a significant change or several changes, it may cause stress for them. At these times, children may feel overwhelmed and sometimes they lose skills that they're working on or that they have already learned. If your child is in the middle of potty training during a significant change and he or she seems to have more accidents than usual, know that that's normal. Have patience and keep as much consistency as possible during that time. 
And creating a supportive environment for the potty training process. Recognize that your child is in control of his or her body. Teach your child the words for body parts, urine, and bowel movements. Offer your child the tools he or she needs to be successful at toileting. Expect and handle potty accidents without anger and avoid punishment as well as too much praise around toilet use. And creating that supportive environment is the parent's job where these are your child's responsibilities in the potty training process. To decide whether or not to use the toilet or a diaper or pull up. Learn his or her body signals for when to use the toilet and to use the toilet at their own speed as all children go through that potty training process at different speeds. And these are some examples of some materials that you might use during the potty training process. Again, it's really dependent on the family needs and what works best for you. A child-friendly potty seat, and this could either be a seat insert that goes on top of the toilet or a separate small plastic potty that sits on the floor, underwear, lots of liquids, and a reward chart if you're going to use one. And the big day, when you are ready to begin, you want to limit adult distractions, encourage lots of drinking, place the potty chair if you're using a separate potty close by. If using a reinforcer or reward, place it in a Ziploc baggie in the bathroom. If you're using a reward chart, you could also place that in the bathroom at your child's eye level. And then you could also use a doll if you wanted to model that potty training process for them. Potty training steps. Every 15 minutes, complete a dry pants check with your child. Walk to the potty, pull pants down, and sit quietly for several minutes. Initially, you want your child to sit long enough to coincidentally catch the urination, up to 10 minutes. For some child, this might be a little bit shorter. You can have a book for your child to look at. You could sing songs with them. You could have them watch a video, something to help keep them occupied while they're sitting there. As soon as your child urinates on the potty, praise him or her enthusiastically and deliver that reinforcer if you're using one or have them put the sticker on the reward chart. As your child continues to potty throughout the first two weeks, the schedule of dry checks can increase. Schedule of dry checks can increase to around 30 minutes. Dealing with accidents, because there are going to be accidents during that potty training process. Do not scold, yell, or punish your child when an accident occurs. Use a neutral tone voice and facial expression. You could say something such as, you wet your pants, we pee pee in the potty. And then practice that potty routine. Walk your child to the bathroom and pull down his or her wet pants. Sit on the potty for a few seconds. And then have them change or help them change their clothes. And then have them wash and dry their hands. And then fading the training process. If it's the process has been successful for, for consecutive days of dry pants and urination in the potty, you can fade the reinforcement and increase the time in between trips to the bathroom. And if you are using that reward and those tangible reinforcers, you could switch to praise instead of using those reinforcers. And what if your child regresses? There are some common causes of regression. Um, one is lack of readiness. If the timing isn't right, your child is or his child is not ready, there will most likely be setbacks. Most toddlers show signs of readiness between 20 to 30 months, though some are ready earlier or later. If there's any stress, um, like we talked about in the earlier slides, any new situation or changes um, may cause regression of those potty training skills. If they're fatigued, um, they may have difficulty getting to the potty. Um, if a child is being pushed too much to um, potty train, they may not be ready or interested, and that may cause the child to refuse to use the potty. And then distraction. If your child is engaged in a preferred activity, they may not notice that they need to go, or they may avoid it because they don't want to leave that activity. Or just the excitement of starting the, this new process of potty training for some kids can trigger, can trigger accidents. And then that inability to communicate. Children may avoid the potty if they don't have that ability to express in words the fears or anxiety that they have about using the toilet. And what can you do if your child regresses? 
be comforting. Your child may be upset after having an accident, so be comforting and sensitive. Never scold or punish them for having a setback. Remember the process varies for all kids. All children develop at different rates and some might be ready sooner than others and some might need more time for that potty training process. And then troubleshoot. You know, think about what may be going on with them. Um, talk to your child and help them communicate if it, to communicate what's wrong, if they're scared or they're anxious or there's something about the process upsetting them. And improve your child's chances for success. If you're using a separate potty seat, put it somewhere st that's strategic. And then you can always have them wear clothes that are easy to get on and off for when they're using the potty. And offer praise every step of the way. And sometimes you just need to take a break and take a step back from the potty training and then come back to it at a later time. And just some notes on when you may wanna think about calling the doctor um, if you notice your child is having some issues. And that could include constant wetness, wetness following laughter, a weak urine stream, painful urination, painful um, or urination or defecation, chronic constipation, and blood in the urine or stool. And then just some reminders, finding a toilet training method that works for your family is the key. Toilet training is a learning process that takes time. Being patient is the best way you can support your child as he or she learns. And children with special needs may take longer to learn to use the potty. And these are just some reward chart examples. Um, it can be as simple as something that you hand draw yourself to something you make on the computer or a reward chart that you buy at the store. And just make it fun and something that interests your child, which goes along with that motivation piece. Whether it's trains or cars or dinosaurs or princesses or a certain cartoon character that they like. And this is just some examples of some potty training tools, um, some potty seats. There is a potty watch that um, you can set for certain amounts of time to go off. And it will then remind your child, a, a little alarm will go off to remind your child that it's time to go to the bathroom. And that is the end of our presentation. This slide shows um, some of the resources that we have on the Harford County website. Um, that if you go to the hcps.org and then you go to the parents and early childhood, there are a lot of great resources there. And these are some resources for um, potty training. There is the zero to three website, which has great resources, not only on potty training, but also as well on developmental areas for children from birth to age three. Um, there's also www.whattoexpect.com, has some great potty training resources, and then healthychildren.org also has not only potty training resources, but great developmental resources. Thank you for attending our presentation.